Hi everyone, welcome back to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this Biostar T-Series motherboard. This is the Biostar T-Z68A+. It is a Z68 chipset motherboard. It supports the Intel second generation Sandy Bridge processors. That's Core i3, i5, and i7. It has the 1155 socket for those processors. And also thanks to the Z68 chipset, uh, you get Virtue technology, which allows you to switch between your discrete graphics and a uh, and the graphics chip that's part of your Sandy Bridge processor. Uh, you also get ATI Crossfire X capabilities, and you can also use Intel's Smart Response technology, although BioStar is recommending that you update the BIOS uh, before you do that, depending on what version of the board that you get. That being said, let's start off with an unboxing. And inside the box, you get a little Velcro strip here, which is holding our serial ATA cables. You can use that for case management, or cable management in your case little Biostar logo on there. Uh, you get a Molex to serial ATA power connector in case you are short on serial ATA connectors. You get three serial ATA cables right there. They are yellow. They're all straight plugs on each end. You get a uh, motherboard input output shield for the back of your case right there. And you get your installation manual for your T-Series motherboard as well as the installation driver disk. It's best to head over to the Biostar website usually to download the latest drivers for this motherboard, uh, but keeps that in hand while you're doing your build anyway. And now, onto the motherboard. And there's an overall look at the Biostar TZ68A+. It has a dark brown PCB and red and white plugs. Uh, real quick, while we have a wide shot here, I will point out the fan headers. You got a three pin header right there for a case fan, three pin header right there for a case fan, and finally your four pin CPU fan header up at the top. Uh, now let's go over in more detail all the plugs and whatnot, and we'll start down here in the bottom right. First off, you have a couple surface mounted power and reset buttons there, so if you're doing an outside the box build, handy to have those. Right above those, there's actually two little debug LEDs that will go on to help you troubleshoot your board if you're having problems upon initial startup. Next to that, you have all of your front panel headers. They're all uh, labeled by different colors on the pinouts there, and they even have some labeling on the board as well as indicating which is the positive leads uh, for your LEDs. Nice to have those. Next up we have one, two, three USB 3, I'm sorry, USB 2.0 front panel headers, uh, the red ones that you see there, uh, the aforementioned three pin fan header. You have a consumer infrared header right there for uh, connecting an infrared device. You also have a, have a comm header right there, and then you have this long purple pin out here, which is actually a printer header. So if you're hanging on to an old school printer that uses that uh, standard printer port, you can connect that to a bracket on the back of your computer and still make use of it. Finally, we have a 3-pin SPDIF audio connector right there. And then moving up to here, we have our front panel audio connector for your mic and your headphones. Uh, next up, let's talk about our PCI slots. Uh, we have a couple legacy P standard PCI slots here at the bottom. And then we have three PCI Express slots. The top one is a full 16-speed PCI Express slot. That's where you're probably going to plug in a discrete video card if you're using one. Next, we have a single speed PCI Express slot. And then finally, we have another full length uh, PCI Express 16 slot. Now, this board does support Crossfire X, but no SLI, sad face. But if you are using Crossfire X and two cards, these slots will run at 16 speed and 4 speed. Uh, let's move over to the right side of the board and talk about our serial ATA outs. We have one, two, three, four serial ATA revision to 3 gigabit per second ports right there. And then separated from them up here, we have two white serial ATA revision 3 6 gigabit per second ports. They are clearly separated, so you don't confuse between the two of them. And those are all controlled by the Z68 chipset, which is right underneath this passive heatsink right there. Moving along up the side of the board, we have a 24-pin standard motherboard power connector. We have our four DDR3 slots for your system memory. This supports DDR3 speeds of 1066, 1133, and 1600. Actually, no. Also, 1866, 2133, and 2200 overclock DDR3 speeds. And it does support up to 32 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. That is if you can find your way to some 8 gigabyte DIMMs. If not, go for the 4 gigabyte DIMMs and you can still get up to 16 gigs installed right there. Next up, we have our 1155 socket right there. That's for your Intel second generation core i3, i5, or i7 processor. Uh, CPU fan header right there at the top. We have our 8-pin EPS 12-volt connector right there for supplemental CPU power. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 phase 
uh, CPU power delivery. There are some LEDs for that, which I'm pretty sure, dang it, I lost them. Where'd they go? And we're back, yes. Okay, uh, here are the LED indicators right there for your CPU uh, power delivery that will light up to indicate uh, the current phase of your CPU power delivery. And that pretty much wraps it up for this side of the board. So let's now go over to this side of the board and talk about our inputs and outputs. Uh, here on the side, we have a couple USB 2.0 ports right there. Uh, we also have a PS2 port there for a mouse or a keyboard. Uh, we have HDMI, DVI, and analog VGA outputs there, and that's if you're going to be using your integrated Sandy Bridge, uh, the GPU in your Sandy, Sandy Bridge processor, uh, which means that you can actually use this board without a discrete GPU, or you can add one, whatever you desire. Uh, next up, we have a couple USB 3.0 ports right there. We have a gigabit Ethernet port. That's a Realtek chip controlling that. And finally, we have our audio outs for uh, standard audio and microphone. And that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Once again, this has been the Biostar T-Series model TZ68A+, featuring the Z68 chipset and the 1155 socket for Intel second-generation core i3, i5, and i7 processors, also known as Sandy Bridge. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.